I would like to thank uh, Paul for this wonderful meeting. And uh, I would like to convey to you our results of our single-blinded uh, 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 randomized controlled uh, trial. We have no disclosure for this study. If you look at the different treatment options, you have either minimal invasive with rather high recurrences, or you have more extensive surgery with more complications but less recurrence. So there is room for improvement. And knowing that, our rationale for therapy was that if you, if you treat patients with a rather minimal invasive procedure, we were doing a mul multiple mix with, with a needle. And I would like to emphasize also that needles get blunt, so use them uh, very often. They go up to 100 nicks per ray, and so it's multiple. You soften then the cord by this needle, taking care that the bevel will never go under the skin uh, completely. Then you can see the release already after doing the multiple nicks from proximal to distal. Then use a hooked needle to release the skin from the subcutaneous tissue then taking a lipoaspirate and putting a lipofilling because there's fat deficiency. Fat also is not only a filler, but it also has wound healing capacities has been proven many times now in, in, and, and been published in cell. And, and we use a splint. This is a film of a lady one year after PALF. I'm sorry about the resolution. One year after PALF, and you can see hardly any scars. Now the same lady, on the right hand, you can see the contractures of the small finger, the fourth finger, and even the third finger. We mark the area and use multiple nicks from proximal to distal, never losing eye on the bevel of the needle. N don't go deep. My finger blocks going deep. The cords are softened, and you completely lose the skin. First time I saw it, it was really, for me, a, a miracle to get it that softened and then put in the lipo aspirate and do it in every way, never using the same track to seven, going up to 10 mils, and you can, you can lose some fat, uh, we don't care. Five, five, five days post-operative, this is the same lady, and after 15 minutes already makes a full fist. So it's an early convalescence. Now we did the study by including primary patients with MP joint contractures more than 20 degrees and, PI and or PIP joints more than 30 degrees. We randomized them by tens and taking envelopes. They have, they have been, they, they've seen the, the surgeon who said there is an indication to operation saying nothing. They then saw a film and after the film they were randomized to either PALF or limited fasciectomy. And we have uh, described our method earlier. They were measured blindly with a semis weinstein test, cutting out the, the distal end of the gloves to have the tip of the finger as for sensibility. And they were measured by other people than who did the study. And we, I think the most important part is because in, in trying to uh, convey to you uh, recurrences and, and how the results are, we only use the most affected finger. What we see often in literature is that they use multiple fingers in one hand in the same patient. That is not correct from a statistical point of view. So it's very important to state that we only use the most affected finger for the analysis. So we, for the power analysis, for the difference of more than 10 degrees, uh, we, we said we needed two groups of 40 hands. And you can see here the uh, randomization, and we had, uh, at the end, uh, 39 patients having baseline uh, on the one, one arm, uh, 44 hands, and 30 patients and 32 hands. People were, who were not in the, on the right side for limited fasciectomy were have, and either had cancer, were not happy with the randomization, or were too long on the waiting list for their minds. That was, that was a, a, a bit more dropout on that side. And you can see we had a very good, uh, luckily, we had a very good one-year post-op, because from 44 hands, we had 42 hands follow-up, and from uh, 32 hands, 30 hands at the other arm. Uh, people who were operated on one side and who had bio eight patients who were also operated on the other side, and they had on one side the PALF and the other side limited fasciectomy. If they had limited fasciectomy on one side, they had, would had PALF on the other. So they were their own, co their own controls. Looking at results, if you look at the joints 
Of course, you have PIP and MP joint, but if you look at the joints per se, you can see that at the PIP joint, if this is the baseline starting between 30 and, 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 and 40 and 50 degrees, you can see an instant drop after correction. This is after two weeks, three weeks, six months, one year follow-up. And you can see the pulp and you see limit vasectomy. PIP joint. MP joint, as, as always, is always better corrected than the PIP joint. One year follow-up here. No significant differences between the two methods in, these, in this particular survey. If you look at the total passive extension deficit, same thing. But, and again, only the most severely affected finger was in the analysis. But you can see there's, there's a trend, although not significant, that the PIP joint is less corrected in the PALF than it is after surgery. But no significant difference. If you look at making a fist and the early convalescence, then you can see there's a great difference for the minimal invasive procedure versus the uh, limited fasciectomy. And you can see it in the picture here, depicted here, that after, after two weeks post-treatment, the LF group in general is far less in making a good fist than, uh, than the PALF. But after one year, this completely is, is gone. As you can see here, that at six months, they already meet each other, and then they're the same. So, but it is significant in the early phase. And in DASH, and we all know that DASH is not specific enough, but at that time point, we use the DASH. We would rather use the Michigan hand score, which we're doing right now, uh, but was not, again, no significant difference. What about complications? In the PALF, we had two transient uh, CRPSs with not an early convalescence, but re resolved completely at one year. And in the LF, we had one non-transient CRPS and one nerve injury. What about the activities of daily life? Nine days median on the PALF side and 19 days, which was a significant difference between the two groups. Again, early convalescence. What about satisfaction? If you look at, would you choose the same operation? We did more, more in, t in, um, in terms of time. I'm just taking out these two. Would you choose the same operations? It's actually the same between the two groups. Would you recommend the same operative family and friends? The same between the two groups, as you can see here. So in conclusion, a shorter convalescence, ADL and FIST for the PALF group. Recurrence rate at one year, not significantly different between PALF and LF. The MP joint and PAP joint, no significant difference. Uh, however, the PIP is less straight in the PALF group. And I'm specifically not saying recurrence because I just want to give you figures because there's no clear definition on recurrence. Everybody's saying something different in literature. Two long-term complications in the lab group versus none in the PALF group. Thank you very much.